What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know how it goes, another day, another video. Last night I tweeted, I sleep, what recent news, topics, tweets, videos y'all want me to talk about tomorrow? No crazy announcements, we're gonna get right into the news. All I ask is that if you guys haven't subscribed already, can you just do me a favor, just double check to make sure that you're subscribed. The last time I asked, uh, the video did really well, um, <laughs> and you guys also dropped a lot of likes. So if you guys can just do those two things for me before we get started, that would be absolutely dope. You don't have to if you don't want to, obviously, but I would really appreciate it. And also, and, and this is news, this no longer counts as the intro, uh, but last night, uh, the D'Angelo Wallace. Uh, he raided my stream last night on twitch.tv slash Inferno Omni. So uh, I've been uh, I've been blessed by the uh, number one commentator in the world. So I'm just saying, um, you know, I was kind of kind of excited about that. Okay, I'm done. I, I still haven't stopped fangirling over since last night. <clears throat> Let's talk about the news. All right, this one's pretty big. Um, at It's Me Link said PewDiePie's diss track Coco getting removed by YouTube. So if you guys didn't know, uh, PewDiePie made a diss track called Coco uh, on his YouTube video. We actually talked about it a couple days ago and it was a diss track towards Coco Melon, a uh, YouTube channel that's basically dedicated for kids, that's basically growing in popularity and probably will uh, pass PewDiePie and subscribers just because of just how overwhelmingly popular it is with kids. So yeah, he made this diss track and it was absolutely hilarious. It was absolutely satirical and it was i think it took weeks if not longer to make this music video it was very highly polished it had kids on there um it had acting it had a lot of a lot of things it had graphics it had animation it was really well done so yeah it originally started from this tweet it looks like we got more information where it says pd pie's coco melon diss track was removed due to bullying dot 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 and what you see uh, says the video has been removed for violating youtube's policy on harassment and bullying now i don't know if you guys watched the video but there was no harassment or bullying it was all fun and games uh pewdiepie does this commonly when he makes a music video when somebody's trying to surpass him where he makes jokes and he pokes fun at him and it's all fun and games it's all satire there's no hatred there's no bullying <laughs> it's all fun so let's let's see what youtube has to say to justify removing pewdiepie's diss track because that's wild it's because i mean wasn't there like an era of youtubers where they were all just making diss tracks like non-stop like jake paul and all of them they were all making diss tracks none of them got taken down so is this some type of updated policy where no one's allowed to make diss tracks on YouTube anymore? Is that is that what's gonna happen? Is what's gonna be next? You can't box on YouTube anymore. They're just gonna take away every big thing that big YouTubers are doing or something. I don't know. Let's just read. Jumping in to clarify, this video was removed for violating two policies. Number one, child safety images slash themes for kids, but containing inappropriate content. Okay, I didn't see any kids' safeties being uh, threatened in the video. Number two, harassment by inciting harassment at other creators we allow criticism but this crossed the line details and image below let's let's read this okay because this is well because i think a lot of people had to come to this decision to take down coco you know like it could have just been one person but oh now nah, i'm gonna take this down no this had to be like susan herself being like let me review <laughs> pity pie's video and be like yes i agree it, it, it does cross the boundary so this thing reads child safety on youtube update content that targets young minors and families but contains sexual themes violence obscene or other mature themes not suitable for young audiences is not allowed on YouTube. What? I don't remember anything of that nature being in that video. There were kids in that video and they made them act like they were saying bad words, but they weren't. They were probably just lip syncing like good words, but then they plugged in bad words. But I mean, the only thing that I can think of is that PewDiePie was cursing a lot. He was cursing up a storm. <laughs> he was dropping the F-bomb and everything all over the place. That's the only thing that I can think of, but I wouldn't even consider that mature content. You know what I'm saying? I think of a lot of the violence or the obscene, like it's just, it was fun satire and it was cute actually. He had the kids in his face basically bullying him it was it was cute anyway continue to read youtube doesn't allow content that endangers the emotional and physical well-being of minors a minor is defined as someone under the legal age of majority usually anyone younger than 18 years old in most countries slash region i like how the one that's highlighted is the update one like <laughs> i don't know when that update came but i like how they highlighted the one that says update which means i don't know when that update came into place but yeah. Harassment and cyberbullying policy. In some rare cases, we may remove content or issue other penalties when a creator repeatedly encourages abusive audience behavior. And I'm just gonna skip to the last highlighted one. Creates content that harms the YouTube community by persistently inciting hostility between creators for personal financial gain. So, okay. Okay, okay. This doesn't make any sense, bro, because uh, what PewDiePie did wasn't even a fraction of what Eminem did to <laughs> your boy, uh, what's his name? Machine Gun Kelly? Okay, that was an actual murder, okay? Th that man got murdered on the internet. He is still dead, rest in peace. Uh, but yeah, uh, 
this was nothing compared to that. Anyway, let's continue reading, okay? It says, 202 also note any re-uploads of the original, including full length or partial re-uploads, clips, etc., will be removed too. Still images are okay. Also, dropping the policy links below for reference. Uh, obviously, nobody liked that. So yeah, what somebody also pointed out is that there are exceptions, and they believe that PewDiePie's video was an exception. After all, at the end of the video, PewDiePie says it's all a joke. You know, like Eminem talks about crazy stuff, and at the end he says, hey man, I'm just joking, okay? I'm just playing with you guys. Here, it says, scripted performances. Insults made in the context of artistic mediums such as scripted satire, stand-up comedy, or music such as a diss track. Note, this exception is not a free pass to harass someone and claim I was joking. So this is, come on, come on, come on, dog. Is there is there really no nuance in YouTube? Does, does, does nobody actually understand? Like, does nobody watch PewDiePie? Does no one just see, like, he's not... <laughs> He's non-problematic, dog. Ever since he's left Twitter, bro, he's been completely non-problematic and has just been making content and just playing around and joking and memeing and, and not really getting into any trouble. And this was not, like, I'm just gonna go ahead and work on a project for three to four months and just harass Coco Melon. Is that what they just believe that happened? Like, for financial gain, this dog doesn't need money, dog. Like, come on, bro, come on. So yeah, that's the news in a nutshell. I mean, obviously, I'm guessing that PewDiePie is gonna actually make a video, if not today, sometime tomorrow or this week, talking about the situation and how his video got striked. He probably will just make money off the controversy anyway, and then eventually he'll probably get the video brought back up, because this is PewDiePie, he'll, he'll figure out a way. But it's completely garbage, bro. Like, this, this is non-problematic bro it was satire it was funny content and there's much more explicit stuff on youtube bro like there's wap there's there's music videos there's there's things that should not be on youtube that are allowed to be on youtube bro there's like naked yoga like come on dog come on give my man a break yo he's making good content can you can you not it just feels like youtube is just constantly always targeting the wrong persons you know what i'm saying like there are clear people and the wrong and a lot of people in the commentary channel you know just they come out and they say hey youtube did you know like that all of these channels are out there are channels where people are killing animals or abusing kittens and stuff like that did you know that they exist and they've been existing for months and you've allowed this to happen on your platform and now there are copycat channels like and youtube is like huh no i'm sorry i can't hear you uh, i just saw this music video by pewdiepie and i gotta take it down because <laughs> it endangers kids and it's, it's hurting coco mella like bro come on dog come on so uh justic said recent markiplier drama yes my man markiplier has somehow found himself in drama by doing absolutely nothing and by nothing i mean markiplier is currently playing honey pop 2 double date on his youtube channel um <laughs> if you're a fan of markiplier then you probably may have already seen him play the first honey pop which was an amazing adventure it's probably as as iconic as him playing like five nights at Freddy, him playing Honey Pop was definitely an, an adventure. So a lot of people were excited to see him play Honey Pop too. However, as of yesterday, there were several tweets, including this one right here, where people were asking Markiplier to stop playing the game. It says here, Hi Markiplier, your community would like for you to discontinue your playthrough of Honey Pop 2. It displays transphobia and Islamophobia in the gameplay. Well, they continue, specifically they added the option for a poly, a trans character, to be either cis or trans and stereotyped Abia, who is hijabi, as a repressed slut. Uh, not to mention, Abia's job is a security personnel at an airport. Uh, you probably know what that implies. Uh, continuing, we hope you discontinue the series. It's been fun, but it's harmful. If you ever read this, and to whoever reads this, Thank you for understanding. Another person spoke out and said, Hey, Markiplier, me and the rest of your community hope that you discontinue the Honey Pump series as it contains an uncomfortable amount of fetishization. Fetish. <laughs> Fetish. <laughs> fetishization towards different races and displays Islamophobia on one of the avatars. It says, The developers of the game are LGBTQ plus phobic and are just shameless towards people who wear hijabs. They made that avatar remove her hijab to match an outfit for the player's satisfaction, and it's disgusting. Okay. Uh, this is just what people are saying, by the way. I'm just just, just reading tweets. I'll read another one. Uh, this one basically targets Abia. I hope I'm saying her name right. Abia Nawazi? Nawaz Nawazi? Trigger warning. Uh, Islamophobia. I just learned what TW was like a couple weeks ago. I had no idea what that thing was. Continues, I want to tell something about the Honey Pop 2 game and the reason why the game is Islamophobic as a Muslim myself. First off, one of the characters is a Muslim character named Abia. According to the playthrough that I've watched, I think she is bi? Question mark? And here's Abia, uh, occupation, airport security, age 25, ethnicity, Arab, Persona, <laughs> persona, repressed slut. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all, bro? <laughs> Aren't we all repressed sluts, dog? <laughs> hobby watching porn. Don't, isn't that isn't that isn't that all of our hobbies, bro? I'm confused. What's what makes her so different? Shoes, flats, cup size D. Favorite color, 
mauve. Um, okay. So yeah, fellas, those were the tweets. Now, if you just type in like Markiplier or Honeypop 2 in Twitter, literally the rest of Twitter is everyone being super excited and ecstatic to watch <laughs> Markiplier play Honeypop 2. Uh, it's literally just all positive news, positive information. There's no drama. No one's actually addressing it that I can see. Everyone's just like, yes, I'm happy to see it. Someone even actually said, I'm gonna put my feminism on pause to watch Markiplier play <laughs> Honey Pop 2. And you guys, if you guys come to the video, Markiplier still loves you. He uploaded this uh, two days ago. Uh, the, the like, this like ratio, 200,000, 1.8K likes. So it, it doesn't seem like this is an actual big deal. It seems like there's a few small minority of people who are trying to I guess not let Markiplier finish Honey Pop 2 because they are offended by some of the things that are in the game. So yeah, that's the news. There's also people on Twitter who are basically like, can you guys stop trying to cancel Markiplier? Can you guys stop trying to ruin the parade? Can you stop trying to make a big deal out of nothing? It's Honey Pop. Like it's a game that's supposed to be like a bit offensive <laughs> in a way. Personally, I don't know too much of the details when it comes to the trans person that's in the game, nor the details of the Abia in the game. You know, I haven't played the game personally yet, um, but <laughs> it seems like this is more of a non-problem few people kind of just I guess taking offense to it and uh, they were being nice about it like to be fair the guys who made these tweets they were being respectful about it like they weren't trying to cancel Markiplier they asked them nicely so that was pretty cool and I mean I'm, I, I don't mind listening to them I, I want to hear what people have to say if they are offended just to see if they're a part of these groups to see how they feel but it also seems like people who are part of those groups also aren't offended so then you got two parties where you're you know you have people who watch his content who are trans and who are not offended and you have people who um who are trans and watch his content are offended what do you do then like when you have that and with one out measures the other do you just can't you know stop doing something based on the the pendulum i don't know i'm pretty sure monkey Pyre is going to continue playing honey pop too i don't think it's inciting as much problems as everyone is saying it is and by everyone i mean these small minority but i could be wrong and i'm not going to try to jump gun or put words in anybody's mouth so yeah ah uh, yes um smash community drama uh involving um Hungry Box and introspective and uh, a larger part of the Smash community, ESAM, a bunch of people. If you guys don't know, um, Pyra and Mithra were released on Smash Ultimate. They were announced and uh, yeah, there was drama around them being sword characters, drama around them being, you know, uh, characters that people don't like, you know, blah, blah, blah. The normal Smash community drama that everyone, you know, can, can tolerate. However, apparently uh, Hungry Bucks, when he uh, made a reaction video to uh, Pyra and Mithra being in Smash, apparently, uh, the, <laughs> apparently he was just basically fixated on their boobs. Um, and just kept pointing out the boobs. <laughs> I kept, I think the meme is booba or something like that. And uh, yeah, so yeah. After Hungrybox took down the video, which had, I guess, a, an appropriate thumbnail, uh, he made this tweet. He said, "Hi all. Earlier today, I uploaded a video of me analyzing the trailer for Pyra and Mithra from last night, along with a tweet. However, and quite tone deaf fashion, I decided to make a lot of boob slash body jokes. In doing so, I didn't consider the perspective and comfort of others. Continuing, given the events in the Smash." committee from last year and my own history, it should be far more obvious when to know what jokes are and aren't appropriate. I agree with many of the points made by my peers, the content you make creates the community you foster. Uh, continuing, I or any other content creator shouldn't encourage the objectification of women, even if it's a video game character. Because one step leads to another and then back to the same problems that led a lot of pain for others, I've gone ahead and removed the video. Finishing with, I've taken it as another learning lesson. I like for my content to be enjoyable by everyone. I appreciate those who reach out directly i always learn from those conversations it's those perspectives that are most important and it's one step in fixing a larger problem so yeah this all happened because there was a backlash from the smash community because hungry box was basically you know <laughs> he was fainting for pyra and mithra and he was you know putting a lot of emphasis on their body. One of the people who were very vocal about this was uh, Colin, AKA Introspective, who is back, uh, back on YouTube, by the way. He, you know, made a reaction video. I'm glad he's doing back. But yeah, I was kind of surprised to see him in this conversation. Um, he spoke out about what happened and he tweeted this. People are all of a sudden outraged at people making Pyra Mithra boob jokes, but I recall seeing a million Steve me jokes or sexualizing shirtless Sephiroth and no one batted an eye. Not saying it's wrong to be offended by it. I'm just wondering where the line is drawn. At the end of the day, I feel like there's some people, not everyone, of course, who say if 
opinions simply for made up internet points and don't even realize how selective be hypocritical they're being or what double standards are. If people's main issue is that Smash shouldn't be sexualized because of minors in the community, then none of it should be okay. But I didn't see anyone up in arms about other sexual jokes made. It doesn't matter the gender, it's the principle that shows people hypocrisy. And uh, his last tweet, he said, I never meant to have people think that I don't acknowledge the severity of sexualizing women or that I think men are oppressed. I made a specific point about how sexualization is treated and it was taken many ways. To anyone I offended, sorry, I'll choose my words better. So yeah, that's one side. We're gonna go back into the side of the people who are against this argument. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of show you guys some of the big arguments that are happening here and I'll let you guys know how I feel about it at the end. But this is some of the context that you need to know to understand the situation and why people were basically up in arms. Now, this tweet from Real Beat Peach said, if you don't think you have an influence on your YouTube Twitch audience, here's a back to back of the comment section of Mewtwo King and Hbox's Pyro slash Mythra videos. Left is Mewtwo King and right is Hungrybox. Your influence, the culture your community has, which should definitely be considered kids watching. And over here on the left, you got comments from Mewtwo King's channel that's talking about like tech, like Pyra isn't holding her sword and hopefully we get torn to battle theme. And uh, I think Flame Nova is her neutral B, you know, a bunch of guys talking about the frame data because I'm sure Mewtwo King is literally only focusing on the frame data. He doesn't see, <laughs> he doesn't see the boobas. He just sees the frame data. Whereas in Hungrybox chat, uh, there were people saying, you know, Sakurai, Booba, no more sword characters. I would seen that Sakurai doesn't play by his own rules. Watching this live was the best I've ever seen. Booba, Hungrybox has become Hornybox, etc., etc. So yeah, and then finally, one of the most prominent figures who were on the other side of this argument was uh, Esam. Uh, he tweeted a lot. <laughs> I can't read all of it, uh, but one of the biggest tweets he made was in response to uh, Introspective, and he said this. Women are uncomfortable with people focusing on Pyra and Mithra's appearance way more than anything because they are in a community where people only care about them for the way they look. Men weren't upset about Sephiroth because we don't feel like people only view us sexually. Uh, followed by his tweet got 16k likes, which is basically showing that 16,000 people either don't get nuance and understand how the truths revealed from last summer are a result of the culture that stuff like this contributes to or don't get that men and women aren't affected the same society um, and kind of goes on and he you know quote retweets and shares people's feelings that kind of matches as well so yeah that's the situation in a nutshell and uh this is how i feel about it number one i don't really consider myself a part of the smash community okay so just don't take my words and just apply it to like the smash community okay i'm not a representative anymore i've talked about how i've kind of left that scene. Um, I play Melee from time to time, but you know, I'm more of a casual at this point. I am not a prominent member, so just <laughs> don't include me, okay? I do see both sides here. I think there are points that are being made on both sides. However, I do think that both sides are also being kind of blind to the other side as well. I don't think there's like a combined joint respective uh, side here that brings in all of the context and the information. Like on one hand, I think it's okay for you to fiend and lust after Pyra and Mithra. Like <laughs> they're game characters, anime characters, you're allowed to do that. However, I wouldn't have is doing something like that within the Smash community, within the context of the Smash community, given what has happened, okay? The whole thing that happened with the Smash community is going to tie back to almost every problem that happens in the future. If anything happens, it'll always tie back to the summer where all of the Smashers got outed for, you know, harassment and underage kids, all that stuff is always going to come back no matter what happens. So in my opinion, I do think it's very important to listen to the women of the Smash community on this and defer to how they feel because that's what we're talking about is people's feelings and how they feel. And if uh, a lot of women in the Smash community are saying, I don't feel good about what's being said and what's happening within the community, we should, we should, we should listen. You know what I mean? Like, even if you don't believe in the concept, like if someone's saying, Hey, I don't feel good, this, this, I don't feel good. And there's a large majority of people saying they don't feel good and they're a part of your community and you care about that community, we should listen. Uh, yes, there's an argument that there are people who would be able to do this all the time. We always talk about, you know, shipping characters in Smash all the time. But I feel like now the area is so sensitive that you just shouldn't touch any kind of sexualization when it comes to the Smash community in any regard. Just just leave it be, E for everything. If you wanna, <laughs> if you wanna be a horrible when it comes to Smash characters, do it in your own private community with 18 plus people and adults, okay? But in terms of minors and kids and women, kind of keep that out of the scene. That's probably what should probably be happening. Like I said before, I think both sides have fair points, but I don't think either of them are going to come to a consensus on Twitter because Twitter is not the place to have that conversation. So yeah, that's how I feel. Not as a representative of the Smash community, just me as an outsider looking in. And last but not least, but like when it comes to Hungrybox, I don't think he should be canceled. Introspective, I don't think any of them should be canceled. Both of them basically reflected on the input that was given from the other side of the standpoint as well. And they issued their apologies. And I think they're they're good people. I think they all care about the community. Hungrybox, Introspective, Esam, the women, everyone, they all care about it. You know, they're not... <laughs> 
trying to make things worse. And the fact that they're opening themselves up to uh, different interpretations and different communications and different points of view means I think the discussion is healthy. It's just Twitter is not the best place to do it. Yeah, I, I, I think this is progress, but it looks a little rocky, but I feel like this is progress. So at Oberon tweeted, Jack Septiguy making Sakura stands angry because she said he says she sucks. And then they spoil the show for him. Wow. <laughs> That's messed up. That's, uh, I hate people who spoil anime so much. So for those of you guys who don't know, Naruto, anime, come you, you know, right? You know, anime, come on. Believe it, I wanna be Hokage, believe it. Character, you probably know, her name is Sakura. She's one of the three main ninjas between her, uh, Naruto, and Sasuke. And uh, yeah, apparently Jack Septica is watching Naruto for the first time. And on his Twitter, he started to give a little bit of feedback on what he thought. And he tweeted, I started watching Naruto this week. I've never seen it before. I didn't even know what a Sharingan was. That's cool. That's 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 cool to see somebody like Jack Septicai. By the way, you guys don't know Jack Septicai. Super huge YouTuber, similar to Markiplier, makes less plays and gaming content and stuff like that. You should, I think you guys know, but just in case you just don't know. Anyway, he said, so far, 31 episodes in. Naruto's super funny and adorable. Sexy Jutsu. Sasuke's a bit of an ass, but cool. Kakashi's literally the coolest. My favorite right now. Rock Lee is dope. Excited to see more of him. Sakura is literally the effing worst. Stop yelling names and help. <laughs> <laughs> and so in case you guys aren't aware about anime Twitter, okay, there's this ongoing like battle between people who hate Sakura and people who love Sakura. Like basically, you know, it's not even who love Sakura. There's people who hate Sakura and the people who are defending her basically. Like <laughs> they uh, do not like Sakura and there are people who are like, hey, stop attacking Sakura. So I already looked in the replies. I'm already caught up on Naruto, so I know everything, but I already looked in the replies. And yes, people who are mad that Jack Septic Eye does not like Sakura went in there and started dropping spoilers all over the place. Naruto spoilers, Baruto spoilers, spoilers all over the place to basically get back at his opinion of a character in the anime. And that's absolutely garbage. Absolutely garbage. It's kind of representative of what the anime fandom can basically be. People take a lot of offense and they take it personal. <laughs> when you don't like something that they like, so personal in fact, that they will ruin the most popular anime of all time probably, it's next to Dragon Ball Z, for you because you don't like a character that they feel like you should like. So I'm gonna block this tweet out so you can't see the spoilers, but there are literally people with Sakura avatars. Their, their avatar is, is Sakura. I don't know if it's Sakura, Sakura, whatever. And they are literally posting every single spoiler in the entire series. Literally just boom, 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 bam, bam, bam. So much that if you take a quick glance at it, you can't help but see something. Um, and yeah, the tweet reads, Secure standards are bottom one, by the way. Y'all spoil stuff because someone rightfully does not like your favorite character. Jacksepticeye literally just started Naruto 2, and anyone who started watching it felt the same way. Sakura was not a good character at all at the start. And yeah, it's not just one or two people. It's a lot of people. Just a bunch of people who are basically spoiling and then saying, stand secure, stand secure, stand secure. It's, it's, it's... It's completely garbage. Unfortunately, in every community, there are garbage people in the community and in the anime community, there are people who are like this, you know, they're, <laughs> I don't get it. I just, I don't get it. Like, I don't get why people take things so personally. Like, why does it hurt them? <laughs> why, bro? Why, man? You can hate my favorite character. I don't care. I'm not going to ruin the anime for you that I love. I love this anime. I'm not going to ruin your experience because you don't like a character that I like. I don't know why people are just garbage and there's a very strong toxic fan base when it comes to Sakura stands. Not all Sakura stands are like this, but unfortunately there are enough that will ruin things for everyone. So yeah, that's the Sakura drama in a nutshell. In terms of how I feel about Sakura, since a lot of people have been asking me about that lately, I hated her character in the beginning of the show, uh, just like Jack Jacksepticeye. Um, <laughs> they purposely didn't make her likable in the beginning of the show. And there were just so many better characters at that point in time, earlier during the tuning exams. There was Naruto, obviously, there was Sasuke, there was Rock Lee, there was Gara, there was uh, all all these people. Again, I'm not gonna spoil anything for you guys, but yeah, there were just so many better characters and I feel like the show just didn't write Sakura in a good way for people to like her. I don't think they did her right at all. I need to watch Boruto actually, cause I think they did a lot better job at representing her, but I don't think they, they didn't do Sakura justice. They tried to do her justice in the anime, but it wasn't enough, so. So yeah, that's how I feel about Sakura and Naruto as a whole, without any spoilers. Last but not least, but we again, of course, obviously have a little bit of dream drama. Okay, someone asked me to bring this to their attention. Uh, apparently, uh, Josh, 
had tweeted this. Josh, if you don't know, is uh, somebody who streams on SMP Live with the Minecraft community. He used to stream a lot with Call Me Carson back when Call Me Carson was still here. And uh, yeah, he has some tweets that he had to give towards Dream based on Dream's recent behavior, probably doing dealing with uh, John, him and John Swan. So yeah, he tweeted this. Most issues pertaining to a content creator's community can be traced back to the behaviors of the content creator. If your community is toxic like this, it is most likely your fault. Whether or not it's intentional does not matter. Get your priorities straight. Jesus. Continuing, when you say you are fine with that kind of behavior, that leads to situations like this. It is your fault. I wouldn't have even cared to say anything if I had not been directly affected. I'm done now. No long thread. I'm just sick of it. Followed by, you know who you are and everybody knows that he's referring to Dream. So this goes back to his previous tweet where he said, folks really went and wrote smut about me. Take some time off the internet because it's not doing you any good. Followed by, at this point, I don't care if the person being written about it is okay with it. Anybody who is lets their underage fans write stuff about this needs to get their priority straight. This is not okay. So this is this is actually kind of weird. This has to deal back with Dream and the Dream stands. There's this Dream stands. They do fan fictions of Dream and him being shipped with Tommy with other people. It's really weird. There's gore sometimes. The the, the stands are constantly basically sexualizing Dream and all the people that surround him. And yeah, one important conversation within the text of the same thread was uh, by Wigglytuff. He said, Dream deserves to be called out for doing basically nothing about stands, making NSFW about Tommy, Tubbo, and even Drista. These guys are all minors. Which Dream Enjoyer 2, who is a stan, I guess, said he's already talked about this. He said not to sexualize minors in his stream from a while ago and in some tweets on his Twitter account. This was back in January 22nd, uh, which Wigglytuff responded, a single lukewarm tweet is more covering his ass than anything else. The next tweet in thread is him whining about it's not all being his fault but he's enabling and coddling his stand and referring to said tweet dream had said back a while ago i've said this before but don't ship creators that are uncomfortable with it and especially not minors it's disgusting to draw nsfw stuff about minors or anyone that hasn't explicitly said it's fine followed by also i'm not a minor and no one that has ever been in any of my videos ever is a minor yet somehow this is my fault now if he had stopped there on the first text i would have been completely fine but yeah the first tweet was good and unfortunately though i think his community is so stand out that they won't care in fact, him telling them not to do this will probably prompt them to continue to do this. And I think what people are saying is that Dream needs to take a much harsher stance. He needs to be much more firm than kind of like this. He needs to be specifically very firm to say, do not do this ever stop and if you see other people doing it condemn them basically more so he's kind of like hey guys can you um can you chill basically they want him to take a more firm approach and basically i guess josh is saying is that it's a top-down approach it's a trickle down effect and the way that dream handles his stands is a topic that a lot of people have talked about before people don't think he handles it properly in fact a lot of people think that he abuses the concept that he has so many stands like you saw in the john swan situation where he basically had 300,000 people come to his twitch chat if you guys don't know by the way there was some drama between him and john swan and <laughs> he was upset that John Swan made it a big deal on Twitter after he had made it a, a deal on Reddit. So then Dream responded and was like, I'm not going to reply to this anymore. And then he brought 200 or 300,000 plus people to his stream to basically talk about this drama. It's like he, he contradicts himself a lot and yeah, it's Dream. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it was a long video. Sorry about that, but it's a lot of juicy news. So yeah, if you made it to the end, just do me a favor to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate that. Otherwise, yeah, let me know how you guys feel about all the situations below. Um, there's probably more information I could have brought into here, but I'll just save it for another video. But yeah, I hope you guys have a good one. Take it easy. Texas, stay good. Okay, I hear you guys are making a comeback, so I hope everything goes well. And um, yeah, man, you guys take it easy. Stay hydrated and have a good one. Peace.